Hello, my name is Tom here. I'm the Executive Director of HarvestNet Ministries. And I have a little testimony to share with you, witnessed by my wife and me. And it's a little bit unusual, but there is biblical precedent for it. Let me give you some backstory to it. <clears throat> At this point in my life, I was wrestling with issues of faith and prayer. And I had been particularly meditating on Mark 11, 23 and 24. And scriptures, there are a couple other verses that are parallel to that. And in that passage, Jesus talks about how if you have faith and uh, do not doubt in your heart, you could speak to this mountain and say, be plucked up and uh, plopped down in the middle of the sea. And there's a similar story where he says you could say the sycamore tree be plucked up and plopped into the sea. And this particular incident follows his cursing of the fig tree and it drying up from the roots. And so um, that passage, I was, I was chewing on that because in verse 24 then he said, So therefore, whatever things you desire, when you ask, believe that you receive them and you will have what it, whatever you ask for. Um, those were words in red. And so I was really trying to get my head around, around that, around the message of that. <laughs> So around this time, a few days later, there's a knock on my door. I open it up, and there's a Cleveland Heights police officer. And this could only happen in Cleveland Heights. What happened? I said, officer, you know, how can I help you? And he says, well, I'm here to give you a citation. And I said, for what? And he said, for your tree in the backyard. <laughs> and I like, my tree? And he said, yes, you have a dead tree in your backyard. I said, yes, we do. And he said, well, it was reported, and it's a hazard, and you have to take it down. And if you don't, you're going to have to go to court. And I was like, what? <clears throat> so he left, and I thought, this is absurd. And so I called the Cleveland Heights Court and explained my situation. And I said, you know, what's with this? And they said, well, um, you have a large dead tree in your backyard it's been reported and um, and it's supposedly on your property and so you have responsibility to take it down and I said but it's it's a property marker it was here before we ever got here and it's a boundary marker between four different properties there are four garages that sit around it and and uh, so it's not just my responsibility and they said well unfortunately you got reported as being on your property and so if you don't want to deal with this you have to call a surveyor and have them show that it's on the four properties, and then you have to work it out with all your neighbors. And I thought, oh, great. <clears throat> so um, I thought, well, what shall I do? And Cleveland Heights has a division of forestry, and so I called the division of forestry. And I explained my situation, and I said, can you help me and take this tree down? And they said, we're really sorry. We can't do that. We only deal with trees on public property, like in your tree lawn and things like that. And they said, um, you're going to have to do something else. And they said, you might want to try calling the power company if there are like wires. And I thought, oh, that, that will work. I can do that. <clears throat> so I hung up and so I called CEI, the power company, and I explained the situation to them. And I told them, you know, that uh, there are wires running right through the tree. There's a big Y in the tree, and the power, big power lines run right through it. And so they said, well, uh, we do do that sometimes if it's a, a, a direct hazard. And they said, has the tree fallen on the wires? Or are the wires sparking or something? And I said, well, no, not, not yet. I said, but it's, you know, it's hazardous. And so they said, well, we're sorry. Um, you're going to have to call a private tree company. So I called a tree company and explained again the situation to them. And they said, well, our services for bringing down a mature tree start at $1,500. I like $1,500. And uh, he said, is the tree alive or dead, though, he asked me. And I said, well, the tree is dead. And because I'm thinking, well, that must make it easier. But he said, oh, no, <laughs> that's worse. He said, that's more dangerous. And so it will, it will be more expensive than that. And he said, we'll have to really come and see and to give you an estimate. And so I hung up and I just, I, I felt so like, what am I going to do? I and mean, my wife and I are church planters. We didn't have that kind of cash. I'm thinking, Lord, what are we going to do? They bring down a stupid tree. And so um, I, I got up and I went out into the backyard 
and I walked to the back of my yard and just and I just looked at that tree and I just said, Lord, where are we get the money to bring this tree down? <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, bam, the the scripture popped into my mind that I'd been meditating on Mark eleven twenty three twenty four and the other verses <clears throat> about speaking to the mountain to the sycamore tree. And and I, I you know I I guess I kind of really was thinking like oh. I want so much to understand that, you know, I could use that now, kind of. <clears throat> but but I just said, I, you know, I just looked at it, and I just raised my hand. And I said, Lord, I said, would you please bring down this tree? I don't know why I didn't say, Lord, will you give me the money for the tree? But I said, Lord, will you please bring down this tree? And I forgot about it. And it, I'd like to say it was a prayer of faith, but it, I'm telling how it was. It was a prayer for sure, but. So I went in the house, and uh, that was in the afternoon. That night, my wife and I were sitting on the couch talking, and all of a sudden, we heard this kind of rumble, and then kaboom, shaking, and she was like, what was that? I mean, it was like, did an earthquake hit or something? or What was it? It was, it, the whole house shook. And I said, I don't know. And then, and then I remembered, being out there, and I thought, no. And I said to her, I said, oh, it can't be. And she goes, what? I said, the tree. And I jumped up to it, and she goes, tree? What tree? What are you talking about? And I go running out the back, and I flip the rear spotlights on and go out the back door of my porch, and I looked, and I go, oh, my goodness. As I kid you not, there before me, this giant cottonwood tree had fallen over, fallen between the garages, exactly straight, exactly in line with the power lines, landed on the power lines, and just push them right down to the ground. They're sitting all the way to the ground, stretched like rubber bands, tight as could be. And I go, oh my goodness. <laughs> and so I went back inside and got on the phone and I called the power company. And I said, we have a situation. <laughs> so we have this huge cottonwood tree that has fallen down and pulled the power lines down. And they said, is there any sparking or anything? I said, not yet, but you know, they're stretched down all the way to the ground. I don't think they're broken. And they said, well, you know, don't go out there near it. You know, we'll send somebody out. And they had a guy come right out who looked at it. And within about an hour, hour and a half, they had a crew out there with their chainsaws. And they got busy and chopping it up into nice little pieces for me. And, uh, and they drove away at no cost to us. And, um, and we gave glory to God for that amazing miracle. And I hope I'm growing in faith and prayer as a result of it. I hope this will bless you.